Hi everyone, welcome to a new devlog. In this episode, we will see the use of narrative for quests and dialogues, and the prototype in Blender with geometry nodes for the creation of buildings for my game Howling Tales. So let's get started. As I said in the introduction, I use narrative for quests and dialogues. In my game, I want to teach the player some of the most important mechanics as soon as possible. So at the very beginning, when the game starts, we have the challenge of getting out of the house. To do that, we have to talk to our grandma and complete the first quest. Another thing I have changed, which I think is much better, is conversations only start when we expressly interact with the NPC. For that, we have to enter the interaction area and then press the button to talk. This makes the interactions more intentional and we avoid starting unwanted dialogues. Back to the first quest, if we try to leave the house without starting the quest, the player warns us about what we should do. So when we talk to our grandmother, she stops doing her routine to look at us and talk to us. The advantage of using narrative is we can assign quests to the dialogue. And in this case, our grandmother will not only give us one, but two quests. The first one is to take our lunch before leaving the house. The lunch is a key placeholder for the moment. But later I will replace it with the real model. When we take the lunch, it will go to the inventory. And later I will teach the player how consuming food helps us to recover health points. But this is still to be developed. The second quest we get from the conversation is to find five edible mushrooms. If we try to leave the house without our lunch, the player character will again warn us about what we should do. So as you can see, the messages change depending on the status of the quest. Finally, when we take the lunch, the quest is marked as completed, and the door is activated so we can open it. On the other hand, if we talk to our grandmother again, her dialogue also changes depending on the status of the quest, and shows different alternative messages every time we start the dialogue. When we engage in a conversation, she stops her routine to talk with us, and when we are done, she goes back to what she was doing. That's a very simple behavior that wasn't easy to develop, but makes the characters look more alive. All of this is managed with the narrative plugin, which is great. So as you can see, with a very simple quest, I had the chance to see all the potential that the plugin can offer. A little link in the description if you want to check it out. On the other hand, I've added a forest where we can look for the mushrooms for our next quest. I haven't developed it yet, but I've added the models of the trees. For this, I'm using Brushify. It's an asset that assigns materials to the environment. It's very practical because it comes with some very useful tools to scatter trees, grass, rocks, etc. around the landscape, as well as materials for both the environment and the vegetation. I'll leave the link to Brushify down below in case you are interested. My idea is to remake the trees with geometry nodes to add more variety. At the moment, I'm using some old models with some assets from Brushify. Finally, this week, I've continued experimenting with geometry nodes in Blender to create buildings. In my game, there is a small town where we can interact with other humans, accept quests, and learn more about the world. And for that, I created a prototype with geometry nodes to quickly create a variety of buildings. As you can see, the prototype uses placeholders for the moment, but we can define the size of the building, both width and length, and height. We can add structures to the sides, which are modified depending on the sides we want to add. And finally, we can also add towers and choose their position by modifying the seat. This prototype opens the possibilities to create buildings very quickly and many other things, such as creating interiors so we can explore every one of the houses in town, where we can find very useful objects, meet other NPCs, and surely get into some trouble to ultimately provide the game with more richness of content. And that was all the progress of this week. As always, I hope you liked it, and thank you very much for watching. Have a great week.